morning. I hope you've had uh, a good week. And I hope you're now following the rule of six. Or sitting on your home on your own at home as usual and not seeing anybody. Whatever. But uh, more confusion. But this is how we are these days. It's good to be with you again for this service. Um, if I can interpret these notices correctly, um, with the help from my friend, um, the server, Yoke over here, um, it's a reminder or a notice that when it comes to harvest, um, there will be a, a collection of money and of food at the Wednesday service, which will be added to the Sunday service for harvest. Um, a reminder that the Ride and Stride, the wardens are doing this on the 19th of September, and that the annual parochial church meeting coming up in October, if you are uh, going to that and you wish to vote at that meeting, uh, and you are not on the electoral roll, then this is a reminder that you have to be on the electoral roll in order to be able to vote at that meeting. I must say, it's very nice and easy to meditate as we prepare for the meeting with the lovely organ music. So, thank you very much for that. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Collect for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sit for the readings. First reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 21. To me life is Christ, and death is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, there is fruitful work for me to do. Which then am I to choose? I cannot tell. I am called two ways. My own desire is to depart and be with Christ. That is better by far. But for your sake, the greater need is for me to remain in the body. This convinces me. I am sure I shall remain and stand by you all to ensure your progress and joy in the faith, so that on my account you may have even more cause for pride in Christ Jesus, through seeing me restored to you. Whatever happens, let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether or not I come and see you for myself, I may hear that you are standing firm united in spirit and in mind, side by side in the struggle to advance the gospel faith, meeting your opponents without so much as a tremor. This is a sure sign to them that destruction is in store for them and salvation for you, a sign from God himself. For you have been granted the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but also of suffering for him. Your conflict is the same as mine. Once you saw me in it, and now you hear I am in it still. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? He said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? 
Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Do sit down, please. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the Gospel, Philippians 1, verse 27. And am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? Matthew 20, verse 15. Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi is written in a very tender and personal style. It begins with a prayer for them, goes on to talk of Paul's own sufferings and persecutions. The people of Philippi had suffered persecution themselves and had been let down by some of their leaders. So Paul and the Philippians are drawn close together by their common experience, and Paul writes to them with very real affection. He also shares with them his own thoughts and struggles. They had sent a gift to Paul by the hand of Epaphroditus, and had told him to help the apostle as much as he could. Ephroditus had, however, himself been very ill, but Paul assures them that he's now better and had also been very useful to him. In the face of all their struggles and difficulties, Paul urges them to live your life in a manner worthy of the Gospel. Well, obviously, for us, this command echoes down the centuries to Christians today. To those living in places where they are persecuted, such as Iraq, but we can name many other places, it actually comes with a challenge, but also with love and encouragement. I think probably now in the 21st century here in this country, we don't actually face persecution. Um, some young people who go to church may often face a bit of ridicule and bullying from their peers, maybe. But on the whole, today, actually, if we face it, Christians in this country are marginalised. We are sort of written off by the media and regarded as something on the side. Not necessarily a bit odd, but it's not exactly headline stuff, is it? Now, curiously, as a result of this, there are some Christians and Christian churches who, who kind of, to counter that, seem to be developing a sort of siege mentality. Uh, there's a danger. Their way of living in a manner worthy of the Gospel is to set themselves over against society as people who are different because they know the truth. There's a sense in which this is correct, but there's a sense also in which this can be a little misleading, a little unhelpful. When Christians become a tight set, if you like despising society and thinking that they're perfect, then it would seem they are far from following in the footsteps of Jesus. We have to remember that the most severe criticisms Jesus ever made were of religious people, especially religious leaders, and most of all religious leaders such as the Pharisees, who thought that they were in the right, they were perfect. But Jesus went out of his way to mix with the despised and the marginalised, 
Christ and taught that it is never too late for people to repent. And here, the parable in our Gospel reading is speaking out this message, which was one of good news to repentant sinners, but it would seem a bit tough uh, to the people who worked hard to try to be good. If you remember the man in our story, he went out early in the morning to hire people to work in his vineyard. He agreed a day's wages with them. He went out several times during the day and hired more people. And at the end of the day, they all received their wages beginning with those who started work last. They all received the same. And those who had worked all day felt rather miffed, we might say. Some might sympathise with them. But, the man said, Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I'm generous? Those who started work early received what they had been promised. The bonus went to the unemployed who came late. So the love of God is without limit and all are welcome whenever they turn to Him. Whether it's those who have lived many, many years of the Christian life, all they have done has been in that direction. But then those who come on later, we shouldn't view them any difference. Our churches must be open, welcoming and inclusive or indeed then we have no right to call ourselves members of the body of Christ. Moreover, as members of Christ's body, i.e. his hands and his feet in our world today, we have to do the going out and looking and calling. We have to so live our lives in a gospel way that they are attractive to others who come to want to know and to follow Jesus. By our words and our actions, we must call people in and welcome them. So our churches must have kind of porous edges so people find it easy to come in. And moreover, we must be willing to learn from secular society which can sometimes be more Christ-like than the churches. So, from today's readings, we learn that the overflowing love of God is something we cannot fully grasp. But we can, however, grasp glimpses of it and then try to reflect it in our lives as we live the good news and reach out to others. Amen. We stand to say the creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. So in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you
you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Martin, our Bishop, and all your church, especially in this parish and its benefice and in this deanery as we face the challenges of a new and changed society around us. That those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed guide Elizabeth, our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give grace to us, our families and friends, especially during this time when our families cannot be together, when we miss our friends, our relatives. Give grace to them and to all our neighbours that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Silence and remember those struck by the virus, but those in any kind of distress or illness. And we remember especially all those who care for the sick and the dying, and who put themselves at risk. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. We remember those from our own family, from this Christian community, all those who have been teachers and leaders bringing people nearer to the love of God. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We stand for the peace. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there I am in the midst of them, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us signal to one another the sign of peace.
Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine out poured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is Christ is Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Jesus Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The Lamb of God, who can take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have a mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near in faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to the table as a school, trusting in the Lord of Christ, but in the manner of the Lord of great mercies, we are not only so much gathered from the Son of the Lord of Christ, but you are the same Lord who is nature for the ways of the Holy Spirit. Grant us to say, O gracious Lord, so that we can be gracious to the Lord of Christ. Thank you. 
the body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray, keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve.
serve the Lord. 